Hi, and welcome to this video on function arguments and mutability. In particular, we're going to look at how our variables may or may not be affected by functions when we call them and pass our variables to them. And mutability and immutability is really important in that context. So just as an example and as a refresher from the last video, remember that strings, for example, in Python are immutable objects. So once a string has been created, the object can never be changed. So if we have this code, my var equals hello, the only way to change my var is to point it to a different object in memory. So for example, let's say my var points to some object at memory address 1000 that happens to be the string hello. The only way for my var to get a different value is for us to point my var to a different object in memory. We can never modify the contents of the object at that memory address 1000 because it's a string and strings are immutable. Okay, so let's take a look at then why immutable objects are generally safe from unintended side effects. And by side effects, I mean that if we call a function with our variable, then that function may or may not alter the value of our variable. We have immutable objects, we have a general amount of safety. So let's take a look at that. Let's say we have this function here called process and it takes in a parameter s and it's going to modify that parameter by concatenating world onto it. So let's say in our main code now we define a variable my var and set it equal to this literal string hello. So we have scopes, right? We have basically two scopes in this example. We have the scope of our module and then we also have a scope that's the scope of this process function. So when we run my var equals hello then the module scope has a variable called my var and it points to some object in memory. This object right here at memory address 1000 let's say. When we run this piece of code process my var we are calling the process function, the process method, and we are passing my var as the argument, which means that my var's reference, and this is really important, the reference is passed to process. Okay, so my var's reference, a thousand in this case, is passed into process. And the process scope now stores that reference in the variable s. So S points to the same object in memory, right? Now, when we run this piece of code here, S equals S plus world, we are not going to be modifying the contents of this object because it's a string, it's immutable. So the only way that S can now be equal to hello world is for us to create a new object in memory, hello world, at some different memory address and then the reference of s is going to change. s is no longer going to point to hello, it's going to point to this new object hello world. So you'll notice that in the module scope my val's reference hasn't changed, it's still pointing to hello. In the process scope s has now changed its pointer from hello to hello world. So now in our main module when we print my var, well what is my var? My var is still this reference over here. And so when we print my var, we actually print out hello. So as you can see, because the string is immutable, we have safety in that we pass the string to a function and that function can never change the value of that string. So that's what I mean by saying that um, mutable objects, immutable objects, are safe from unintended side effects. But of course, if you remember our discussion from the last video, we've got to be a little careful with that, especially with like container style objects, like a tuple, for example. Even though tuples are immutable, their elements may be mutable. So we'll get to that in a minute. But let's first take a look at a, you know, what happens when we have a mutable variable and why we don't have safety in that scenario. So let's say that we have this function now. Process, which takes in a list, 
and it's going to append a value to that list. And let's say in our module code we have my list equals this list one, two, three. So again, let's look at the scopes. We have module scope and process scope. So my list points to some object in memory, which is a list at some memory address 1000. Now when we call process passing in my list, we're essentially again passing the reference to my list, right, to the process method. So my list's reference, 1000 in this case, gets passed to process. Now, LST, therefore, which is the local variable here to process in the process scope, points to the same object, just like we had with the string before. Nothing has changed so far. Everything is the same. But now what happens when we run this line right here inside the process method? We append 100. But what object are we appending 100 to? Well, the object that we're currently pointing to, that LST currently points to, which is this one over here. And therefore, when we run that line of code, our list has changed, right? It has mutated. The contents of the list has changed. The memory address has not changed. It's still the same object. We've just changed its state. So now when we print my list, well, my list is still referencing that object here. So when we print that out, you'll notice that the list is now 1, 2, 3, 100. In other words, before we called the function, my list was 1, 2, 3. After the function has finished running, our list was modified by the function. So that's what I mean by a side effect, right? That process method actually changed the state of our variable. Okay. So uh, mutable objects are not safe from unintended side effects. So whenever you can use immutable objects, it's safer to do so. Now let's just take a look at that tuple example that we had in the last video, which is an immutable collection object, right? Tuples, you cannot add, remove, or replace elements in a tuple, but the elements themselves can be mutable. So let's take a look at this function again, our process function is going to take in a tuple, and I'm assuming here that the first element of the tuple is going to be a list. So we're going to grab the first element of t and we're going to append 3 to it. Now in our main module code, we have this tuple here, which has two elements. The first one is a list. The second one is a string. String is immutable. The list, however, is not. It is a mutable object. So again, we have scopes. So in our module scope, we have my tuple, which points to some object in memory, which has two elements. First one is that list, second one is that string. When we call process my tuple, well, my tuple's reference is being passed to process. So now the process scope has this variable t that points to the same object. When we run this line of code, t0 append 3, we've just modified the object over here. We've added 3 to that list, right, which is the first element inside the tuple you'll notice that the memory address of the tuple stayed the same. That hasn't changed. What has changed is the contents of the first element because it was a mutable object. So now when we print my tuple, well, my tuple is still referencing that object. It has changed, right? So it is now one, two, three, comma, A. So very similar to what we saw in the previous video. All right, so let's take a look at some code and let's just see how this works in practice. So let's create a method that's going to modify its argument. So we'll start with a string. So we'll start by examining immutable objects. So let's write this method that we saw before, dev process. Now what I'm going to do in this method is actually print out the memory address of the variables as we go along. So here I'm going to print the initial s memory address um, equals that and we'll pass in, we'll just do the id of s. Okay, so we'll stick with the decimal version, the base 10 version. And now we're going to modify s by concatenating whatever s was with, let's say, world. And I'm going to print again 
what that value is for s. So let's call that final s. Okay, so that's our function. It's basically going to modify s and we're going to print the memory address of a of s before we modify it and after we modify it. So remember we should see two different memory addresses because s is a string, it's immutable, so therefore the only way to modify s is to point it to a different object. So let's say we have my var equals hello, okay? And we're going to print the memory address of hello. So we're going to say my var uh, memory address, I'll use a pound sign to indicate a memory address, and we'll print the ID of my var, okay? So as you can see, that's the memory address of my var. Now we can call process of my var, okay? And you'll notice that the initial memory address that was received here is the same. So this memory address here is the same as my var. But you'll notice that after we've modified s, the memory address is different. And in fact, the ID of my var if we check now, it is still the original memory address of my var, right? Which was this one here, this one here, and this one here. That hasn't changed, and therefore the value of my var hasn't changed either. It is still hello. Even though at before process finished running, s was now hello world, but it was at a different memory address. Okay. So let's look now at the example where we have a mutable object. So let's call this one modify list and we'll take in a list, let's say LST. And we're going to do the same thing here. I'm going to just copy and paste this code. Actually, I'll copy and paste everything. And I'll rename this LST. Now here, we're not concatenating, we're going to say lst.append, let's append, let's say, the value 100, okay? And then we'll modify this as well, just fix up for the parameter uh, name in the method. Okay, so now we have this method created that will modify the list. But notice, I'm using this append, which means that we're going to be modifying the object state, okay? So now if I have a variable called my list, let's say one, two, three, okay, we can look at the ID of my list. So we can see the ID of my list is some number here. When we call modify list of, and pass in my list, pass in that reference to my list, then you can see that initially Right? What was received in modify list, this memory address, is the same as my list. And after we finished appending, you'll notice that the memory address of that list is still the same. So no memory address references have changed. They stayed the same. And in fact, ID of my list is still the same, right? It ends in 2632, so we're still dealing with the same object. So throughout this entire set of code here, we were dealing with the same object. And if we print out my list, you'll notice that it was changed. So we didn't modify my list in our main code. We modified my list inside this function here. And because lists are mutable objects, it is possible to modify what we pass into a function from within the function because it's a shared reference. Remember shared references from a while back? Well, this is what's happening here. So mutable objects um, do not have the safety, right? Strings are safe, right? They're not going to be changed. Uh, integers, same thing, any numbers, right? Any, any mutable object is not safe and any immutable object is safe to a certain degree. So let's take a look at the tuple example. Right, so let's go ahead and say modify tuple. So we'll pass in a tuple t. And again, I'm just going to take all this code here. And we'll look, we'll print the memory address of t. Now, tuples 
you cannot modify tuples. There is no append method to tuples. But I'm going to assume that the first element of the tuple is a list. So I'm going to take the first element of t and append 100 to it. And then we'll print out the memory address of t again. Okay. So there we go. And now let's write um, my tuple equals 1 comma 2. So the first element of my tuple is a list. And let's say the next element is a string. Okay. So we have an ID on my tuple. Okay. That's the memory address. Now keep in mind the tuple itself is immutable. But in this case, the first element of the tuple is mutable. So when we call modify tuple and pass in t, look what happens. The memory address of t, oh, sorry, not t. Let's delete that. Modify tuple of my tuple. Okay. So. The memory address of my tuple, which was received here as t, is the same as my tuple. And after we finished appending the value to the first element, the memory address stays the same. The tuple hasn't changed, right? The tuple's memory address is still the same. What has changed is the first element of the tuple. So if we print my tuple out, you'll notice that the first element now had 100 appended to that list. So again, this is why, you know, you have to be a little careful when you say that immutable elements cannot change. Yes, that is true. The immutable object, the tuple object cannot change in the sense that you cannot modify the elements, the, the containment of elements in that tuple. In other words, you cannot add, remove or replace elements in the tuple. But if the element in the tuple is mutable, then you can certainly change its value in place. And so in effect, from a programmer's perspective, the tuple's value has changed, right? So be careful. Immutability does not necessarily mean that nothing can change. It can. All right. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.